Hey, hey, fellow YouTubers, JJ the Trucker coming to you from Springfield, Missouri at the Prime Terminal. And I got a special guest here with me. JDQ Transportation, what's up, y'all? Hey, and we are doing a collab video. He's got a channel, I got a channel. So this video is going up on both channels and we got some extra special for you. See Jacob here. What happened, man? What happened? I just upgraded from company flatbed to lease reaper and I just got my brand new truck. His brand new truck, look at that. 2022 Freightliner Cascadia. And man, I looked inside. It's nice, man. It's nice. It's clean. It's got that new truck smell to it. I love it. Oh, it's fantastic. So we're going to give you a tour. I know I've done uh, tours of the older models. Now let's get that updated, shall we? Because I think they actually updated the inside with the 22, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they've got, they've got a few updates it's on the inside. It's a little different than the 19 I just got out of. Yep. All right. So let's do it. Let's start with the outside. Give us the front. Let's give us the whole tour, man. Yep. Look at that. He's got the, the black mirrors. He's got the chrome. Grill. Oh yeah, the sun on the that metallic flakes. Oh yeah, it looks good. I think this color is called blackberry. Blackberry. Still looks Very nice. Good. Yep. Now you went lease this time, right? Right. So graphics. Uh, on the next truck. On like. the next truck. All right. Because this one's the walkaway lease. Yeah, it's the walkaway lease. And but you I'm are... going to be doing an ace lease. As soon as I can. There you go. And that ace lease is the one where you, you put the money deck down. It out with my, uh, my graphics and everything. There you go. And that ace lease, that's the one where you put the money down, you make right. the same payments as this truck for three years, and the but truck's. In three years, you'll get the title to it. That's for the right. Balloon payment at the end. That's it, man. Your truck. So, yeah, I, I hear that. But yeah, on the outside, it's pretty much all the same. You know, aside from this, I didn't have this little shit on my 19. Yeah, this this thing is is nice because on uh, the older models, the, uh, the the windshield wipers would would uh, basically splash all the moisture right onto oh, the mirror, uh, and it was terrible. Did you 2020 have that? Have those little Nope, nope. They came out with them in 21. Okay, that sounds about right. Yep. With my 19 then they have been all over the window, the mirrors, everything. Yep. But right. other than that, nothing's really different from the 19s older models to this. Aside from the big body change from 18. Yeah, a little. Yep. Slight body change on the from the 18. Yeah. Got the single windshield and all that stuff. Yeah, I gotta say, I still like that the fuel yeah. is right here on the sides and and back here instead of in the back. Absolutely, much more convenient than well, on my feet. Not having a headache rack back here. Ah, yeah, no headache rack. Hopefully you can all hear us. I know it's loud here. We got the uh, APUs running. But yeah, you got your uh, tri-pack APU. You got dual load lock holders. You got the uh, the hoses that are all the single hose instead of all the curly Q ones. You got your uh, AC cooler there for inside. Look at that, man. It is nice. All right. Are you ready to inside? Yeah, let's head on inside. Oh, you don't? Yeah, well, I had to get mine separately. Okay. Separately. But yeah, you can. You can get a uh, side box for that. Yeah, really glad that we had to have side box. Oh, I bet. On this, we had like 30 something, 40 foot straps. 30 foot straps. That's where I kept all my straps at when side box. Nice. Headache rack was full of chains and binders and edge protection and stuff like that. Right so on. there was no room to put the 30 something straps in there. There you go. All right, plus again, on now you got the, uh, the the baggage door on the side here. Now on the uh, on your next one, are you going to get the dual baggage door? Yes, dual baggage door, and I'm going to get the sleeper access door. Oh, there you go. So uh, in, in the uh, Freightliner, it is separated, and there's your uh, uh, unit for your uh, APU and your inverter. Yeah, inverter. Yep. Inverter. There you go. Got your triangles there hose for your air conditioning and it is separated 
which I don't know I can take it or leave it it's you know mine's mine goes through all the way but you got all the stuff in the way right and you know once you once you get this far back anyway you can't reach anything else that's in the middle so I might as well keep it separated it's not too bad the only thing that would be good for was a shovel yeah in the winter time yeah but you know what check out where I put mine yeah that's good too right there I just use one of the uh, <laughs> I mean I never need eight load locks Right. I really don't. No. All right. And again, the fuel on the side instead of in the rear, oh, it, it makes such a big difference. It well, really, the only really thing does. is with these freight liners, you see, I haven't tried to put fuel in this one by myself. I just went inbound, outbound. They put like 25 gallons in it. But with my 19, you either had to watch it or put a budget cord on it so it wouldn't cut a flip and make a mess over the side of your truck. Yep. Yeah, on mine, I did not have that issue. Really? Yeah. So I think it, it, I think it has they to fixed be something it. the way this tank is. Because it, it had to have rolled to where that cap was more this way. Exactly, and I think they I think they have addressed that issue because my you know, did not have that issue really? at all. Okay. So I hope they addressed it. Yeah, I hope so. Make sure you put another video out. Let, let oh, us yeah. all know. Yep. And then I do like the easy access door right here too. For the batteries, that's nice. Yep. And for the, the batteries, the freight liners. That's where your air the air tank drains are. Yep. It's down here. You got all your cables right here for your different air tanks. Got to get yep. it right angle for you to hear it. Yep, you got two there, one back there. Yep. And then your four batteries and then all right, you want to come around, let's go hop inside. Yeah, it's hop inside. Alright. Alright, we are back. Alright, let's do the inside now. Let's check it out. Alright, we're gonna start thing in the I bunk. love about the freight liners is all the storage you got. Oh absolutely. You got this right here, you got another little small cabinet. You got a trough that runs across the whole side right here. And it's same cabinets up here on the other side, on the passenger side. And these are some pretty deep cabinets oh, too. Yeah. I mean, these are not small right. at all. And then in my truck, I have my, uh, which I still need to swap all my stuff into here because I just got the truck when I ran into them. I have me a set of drawers that's right here put all my clothes and stuff in. I have a little vacuum I put up here with my Tide Pods and all kind of little knickknacks and then snack cabinet like I like to call it. There you go. And then your, uh, your dinner table. There you go. Dinner table, desk, whatever you want to use that for. Multi-purpose. Yep. Right on. And then the, um, the HVAC unit's down there. There's right. Like no access there, but that's a bit. Man, you actually can pull this off because your HVAC filter is behind that. Yep, exactly. Which I would recommend changing every probably six months because it gets nasty pretty quick. Yeah, I change mine about every three months. Yeah. You know, if I'm using it. What's nice about this cabinet right here is it's a closet. I mean, yeah. it's got a hanger rod right there and everything. Yeah, that's nice. You know, you hang your clothes up on that and... Uh, you know, and, it, and they made it extra long too. So if you've got long clothes, no worries. Yeah. No worries. Or do like I have. I have that set of drawers that I put in there. Just put all my folded clothes in there and then able to stack my vacuum, my laundry pods, and all the other good stuff in there. Yep. I do really miss being, being in the Peterbilt. I miss all this front storage. Yeah, because right all yours is just a bunch of cabinets right here, huh? No, like not even. I've like got this. little trays, but they're <laughs> they're about that big. Oh Two God. little teeny tiny ones. Um, the, the, the Cobra CB doesn't even fit properly oh, in it, <laughs> right? Um, and I don't have the door cabinet for this. Um, it's just smaller, right. it's just, just little, an open area. It is, all it has is a little net to keep the stuff from falling at you. No, it doesn't have the net. The, okay. uh, the older Freightliners had the net. Okay, that's right. And then but, my, yeah. my trainer's 19 Peterbilt had that little net. Yep, and no trough in the Peterbilt. Yeah, that's no good. Oh, uh, yep. We got the curtains. And then he told me a little trick with this inverter right here. Keep the curtain from shutting it on and off. Get a bottle cap, put it right here, and then tape it. Yep, because I was having that issue with the uh, the curtains, because I, I don't, you know, sit there and tape them up, you know, wrap them right. up every time. So it's in here, and as you're driving, it's bouncing up and down, and boom, guess what? Your inverter's off. <laughs> inverter's off. off. You ain't got no fridge. <laughs> no fridge, nothing else. And then it starts beeping at you. So yeah, throw a little bottle cap on that. Now, just a heads up, this is the inverter and where Prime chooses to install the inverter uh, thing. This is not something that comes with 
the Freightliner. Yeah, that's all that, that prime comes, issue. Just like the yep, and there's the EMS system is prime issue. Yep, and there's right the, uh, the uh, inverter right there. And what is that? What's that thing right there? That's the mountain plate for my fridge. For the fridge, that's right. So, so you set your fridge down right here, and you can. Oh, this one actually might fit my big fridge. It might. You got one. How how big is your fridge? Four point four cubic foot. Four point four cubic foot. You can't it's fit massive. that in a Peterbilt without taking out the front seat. Oh, it <laughs> might not fit. Eh, no. Mm. That ain't gonna fit. Guess not. But that's okay. You I can, can use some one-inch ratchets. There Coming from a flatbed truck, I got all that. There you go. But yeah, that I love that feature. You can put your own fridge in there, and it can be big. Yeah. So how tall nice. is your fridge? It's about yay tall. Yeah. See, and I had the big fridge, and it was about yay tall. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So something I just noticed with your freight liner. Did you know you had a light down here? Yep. Yeah, I just found that. Yeah. Sitting down right here. <laughs> <laughs> I only knew that, but yeah, it took me a, a little bit to find that too because uh, on mine I used the the fridge for my nightstand and I had my pillow right. on this side, okay. which is backwards for most people. And I saw that. And That's then something cool. else that when I was in my other truck, I found out by accident. You can make those, you can turn those lights off just a little bit at a time, make them dim. So you push and hold on the switch. When it gets to a certain, you let it go, and it'll stay like that. Oh, nice. And I found that out by accident one night. Don't ask me how because I don't know. <laughs> yep, so let's see all the lighting controls you got back here. Alright, come on back here. Go. So you got your ambient light, which is just a basic perimeter around the thing. And then okay. your sleeper dome, which is just like the dome light, but it's the three sets of it. For and the turn them on again? The curtains. There you go. And then there's the ambient light, and then there's your dome light up there at the front on the yep. driver's side seats of the curtain much more light than the peterbilt oh yeah a lot more i had to install additional lights really yeah because there was not enough light so what else you got back here though what, what other controls are back here the apu controls which is different from my 19 i had from my bunk heater i had a separate knob right here then yeah. i had to adjust the temperature and push a button to set it push a button to turn it on now it's all integrated into these controls there you go that's where you just flip this to heat set your temperature set your fan speed and run with it there you go and then obviously when the truck's running you have your air conditioned fan controls back here for the bunk there you go right on yeah nice and i think the most important part back here is the second bed oh yeah fucking struts are strong Check second bed out. which it gets hot up here freightliner really needs to do something about putting another vent up here which they didn't do this year nope they did not but Freightliner does have an insulation package that you right. can order separately. Uh, it doesn't cost that much. It's like 400 bucks, I think. Yeah. It's not bad. And it's extra insulation around the entire truck. Right. And, and it, it makes a big difference. A lot. Yeah. So and think see, about that for your, your lease purchase. Me, you go to a camping store or whatever, get you like the sewage pipe, like the hose. Yeah. Hook it to that thing down there, and you run it up the side and put it up here. For oh, the okay. Hook it up to, to that one, to right one of these round bits right here. Yep. Yeah, it's it's, it's that one. one. Nope. That's the heater. Oh, yeah, there's your air right there. Yep. And that's an intake for your bunk heater. By the way. Um, yeah, you hook your hose right here because the down here we already have vents. We have two vents actually. We have one right here, one down here. But the top bunk, they only have that one that's on the side of this little closet. Yep. There you go. That one right there, but nothing on the sides, nothing in the corners, nothing over here. So yeah, that makes sense to, so you to run take it. That, take that little hose, probably a three inch hose, put it right here, tape it, and then you run it down and up the passenger side to oh, where nice. the person up top can have some more air. Which makes sense because heat rises, Right. cold cools, you, you, heat, you, know, you cool down the top, right. and that cold air is going to you know drift on down. And you, you know, know Freightliner should think about that. Because you're just cooling it off down here. That mm -hmm. hot air is just building up up top. Yep. Well, the whole thing though is that that piece right there is all part of the APU system. That's not. That doesn't even come from uh, from Freightliner. That's all part of the APU. So if you're using, you know, like if the truck's running and you're using the controls back here, these controls, then you don't get this vent at all. If you're idling the truck, right. all you get are these vents themselves. 
but when Prime does install the APU and installs this vent, they actually do tie it in to the other vent system. Right. So where you are getting so air. So you out have of air out of these two. Yep. There you go. Out of these two. And then that one up top. Yep. But it's not a lot. No, it's not a lot. That one little vent is not enough to mm -mm. cool off the top of that can. It is not. Especially not in Arizona when it's 120 degrees. Oh, outside. no. No way. No way. That's a good idea. I'm, I might have to consider doing that for, uh, yeah, and I actually for my truck, too. Yeah, I that on one of the Facebook pages. Somebody did that. Man. All right, so this cabinet right here is for either a microwave or a TV. Um, but I think everyone uses it for a microwave. Exactly. Throw your microwave in the freight liners, everyone gets the little flat plate mounts and either hangs it right there or goes to the detail shop and have them mount it right there. Yep. So, yeah, let's let's point that out here. So, a lot of, uh, you know, like the detail shop, they'll, they'll actually mount it right here and it'll have an arm that comes out and uh, your TV just kind of wobbles right here. I did the same thing, but over here. I mounted mine here, if you all remember. Okay. Um, but... This guy's got a better idea. What are you gonna do for your TV? Get a flat plate mount from Walmart, which I already have in my truck. Pull these two little buttons off. Get a small Torx bit. Pull these screws out. Focus. Put your flat plate mount up right there. Run them screws back, and you can hang a 40 inch TV on that wall. Now, are these screws big enough? You know, I mean, you oh, look yeah, at that, it doesn't. The, oh, sorry, the my, screws it doesn't, are actually about yay long, so it's it's got about some how height long? to it. About that long. Nice. So that so that'll enough, hold. It's got enough bite to hold the TV. Nice. I might have to consider doing that as well. Right on. Um, another good feature that I do like. If you do need to vent things out um, up here, this knob you don't have to take the whole curtain off just to turn this knob and get this open. See? Now you got just your, don't your windows about open. Because if it starts raining, somebody's gonna get mad. Well, no, even if it's if it's raining, as long as it's not raining sideways, they're all right because all it's doing is tilting the window okay. out and the water will still hit it and go uh, hit it and go down. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, they, they did a good job on that. I was, I was very happy. But this uh, this material and the snaps, you got to really watch it because you, you know, especially on a really hot day, you go to pull this like this. You're going to pull it plumb out. Yep, you're going to pull that, that whole thing out. And man. That's always a pain in the butt, so be careful with that. Yeah, it's a pain to get that little button back. It happened in that 19. Someone had already pulled it out whenever I got it, and I, I couldn't get the button to go back in. Man. Because you pulled it right here. He just ripped the curtain out. Oh, this whole thing popped out, so it's just a hole right yep. here where that button is supposed to be. Yep. And the button is still on the wall, but it's not on the curtain. Yep. Every one of my trainer's trucks had curtains that were all messed up oh, because yeah. of that. Nobody takes care of their trucks. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, let's see. Oh, new feature. This cabinet used to just be flat, uh, yeah. but with last year's model and this year's model, now it's a it's a tray that's kind of sunk in right oh, there. Yeah. Check them out. Uh, so you can put stuff in here sure. and not have it all fall all over the place. Yeah, it's like that on both sides. Yep, both sides. Sure both sides. I just, you told me that because I didn't even notice that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there you go. All right. Now, let's go ahead and show you the front, shall we? We got lots of stuff up here. Yeah. Lots of goodies. All right. So, first thing you'll notice, no more glove box. They took the glove box out. Yeah, I um, think 18 was the last, that old body style 18 was the last body style they had them glove boxes. Yep. Yeah. Now, you can pull this whole plate off, and that's where your uh, fuse boxes are, right. and, and wire and harnesses and all that stuff are. Uh, you've got a nice tray here. Really nice part about this tray is, so most dashes are textured like this. Okay, which means no suction cups will stick to this. No, or nothing sticks. Nothing Nothing's sticks gonna it. Stick to it. No things. Velcro, no stick, no nothing. But now this tray right here, much less texture. I don't even know if you can see it's that. Smooth. It's smooth. Because in my other truck, I have a suction cup foam mount that's like a wireless charger. I never had a problem with it. There you go. There you go. Let's see up here. What in the world is that thing? See, that's quite a few things in there. Because I know for one thing, it's the uh, the lane departure system. It's got the camera for that in there. And I think it's got the sensor for the automatic headlights. And if the truck is equipped with automatic wipers, which I'm not sure if this one is because I'm not seeing it on the controls, but I think it's going to be built into that box as well. There you go. Pretty cool. 
pretty cool. And the, the radar cruise control, that's like it always has been built into that box on the front bumper. Right on. See, up here you got your uh, your dome lights. Well, right. not your dome lights, your map lights. Right, map lights. There you go. Which I'm going to have to pull them off later so I can run my coax for my CB. All right, and then <coughs> start over here. And then right here is your air filter monitor for your engine air filter. It shows you how much pressure it's, because if it starts getting way up here, you need to start, you need to look into changing it. And you move right here, that is a prime installed right way gauge. So once it gets calibrated and you pick up a load and you don't know what your weight is in your drives, you got that to tell you. I love that thing. I don't know what I would do without it. And once you, I calibrated that on my flatbed, the only time I hit the scale was when it was right at 34, just to check <laughs> yep. my total weight. <laughs> yep, me too, man. Me too. And then right here with the freight liners, that's... Okay, I'm going to have to put in my code. Oops. Don't want to show that. <laughs> so the key's got to be on for that. So this little gauge right here is specifically for freight liners. So when you stomp on the brake, it's an application go. pressure gauge. There you go. Pretty cool. Oh, this one doesn't sound like I'm stepping on a cat. <laughs> <laughs> With my other Freightliner and I'm stuck in traffic, I entertain the shit out of myself. I just step on the brake and let it go slow because it sounds like I'm stepping on a cat. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> or like when you blow up a balloon and you stretch it out and you... <laughs> that's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, I don't think that's normal. <laughs> For those year models, it actually is. Wow. <laughs> All right. And then right here is your... Uh, Duran tire pressure monitoring system, which it's still a new truck, so it needs to be driven around a little bit because it ain't got no signal. Yeah. But all of them are on there. Yeah, and it will tell you the, uh, the tire pressure for right. each tire as like you go down. One, right, it actually picked up that one. There you go. But yeah, the other ones, it's not not on yet. Once you drive it around a little bit, it'll, it'll pick them up. Yeah. All right. And then your suspension to lower your airbags so you can get out from underneath a trailer or hook up to a trailer. Or when you're parked on a slant and you're in that downward slant so you're sitting here in bed and you're like you know this way and he's like man I'm gonna roll out of bed drop yeah. the drop the air I and, never thought about and that. then all of a sudden you go <laughs> I, I do that about I do that all the time man all right and Carry then right on. here is yeah your fifth wheel slide and your differential lock which that comes in handy from time to time yep sketchy situations. Yep, I've had to use it. And then right here, <laughs> Prime actually fixed this because this was just a button, like right here somewhere. Yeah. For you. That's that's the button to get your fleet manager to call you real quick. Yeah. Yeah. If there's an emergency and you do not have time to do anything but push a button. You just push that. Push that. They will drop everything in uh, dispatch and find out what's going on. Yeah. And if you don't answer, I'm pretty sure the entire city's law enforcement is going to be there with yep. you. Yep. Um, hill start assist. <coughs> see, that actually comes in handy for when you're taking off from a hill. Put that down so I can see it. If this is if this isn't turned off and you on the brakes and you're about to take off from a red light that's on a slight incline, you let off the brake. It's actually going to hold those brakes until you get on the accelerator. And as soon as you hit that accelerator pedal, it's going to release the brakes and it's going to let you take off. Yep. But exactly. if you don't hit it, it's going to release the brakes no matter what after I think three seconds. Yeah, about three seconds. Yep. Um, it's nice that they have the, the option to turn it off because when you're backing into a spot that's kind of on an incline, um, you know, backing into a parking space, that thing can get real annoying oh, yeah. real fast because you're, you're trying to move and it's the brakes are, are locked. <laughs> so, right, and it shouldn't do that in reverse anyway. It should only do it when it's in drive. Yeah, but you never know. So, yeah, <coughs> it gives you the option to turn that off. All right, right and then you got the engine override shutdown, which I haven't had to use that yet. It it doesn't work in these. <laughs> okay. They they uh, prime has overridden it. But Fair enough. You, but if you press on on the the brake pedal, um, right. or the the accelerator, okay. um, it'll override it, give you another five minutes. So basically, okay. yeah, prime. Yeah, it says the, five the minutes. Five minutes idling max, and then it'll automatically shut down unless you press See, on the pedal. See, I've only I've tried that with mine. It only worked when I hit the accelerator. Okay. But uh, it will idle if it's above 80. So, like, if it's at 80 degrees, it's not going to idle. But 81, you're good. Yep. And if it's 31 or below, it's going to idle. 30, 30 now. 30. 30, okay. Yeah, 30 and below. Yep. Yeah. 
anywhere in between is not going to idle. Exactly. Now, I will say, in case of emergency, like if your bunk heater goes out, right. in the freight liners, Prime can override it remotely. Really? Yeah. Okay. In the Peterbilt, no, they can't. Sounds about right. Yeah. All right. What else we got here? You got your lane departure warning. So if you're going through a construction zone and you tired of hearing that thing, bang, bang, <laughs> you just hit that and it's going to turn it off for five minutes or something. It's going to turn yep. back on. Yep. That is if you need that uh, differential lock, you hit this button at the same time. So it's not going to keep cutting your power if you're trying to get out of a low rut. Yep. It basically turns your traction control off. There you go. And that's the, the light on the back of the cab. Yep. Those, uh, those lights like right up right there those lights utility lights right there help you see when it's nighttime you gotta drop and hook a trailer right and then you got your yeah obvious hazards yeah oh they're silent on this one when the key's wow. off wow they sure are what wow <laughs> i like that usually it's yeah oh there it goes there it goes figures man another yeah. thing i noticed whenever the radio is on and you put it in reverse it's going to mute the radio yeah that's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> they want you to focus and concentrate. I'm and then they want to focus when I'm listening to music. Yep, and then when you put it back into neutral, they want it to scare the crap out of you because you've had it at full blast. Yep. And you're like, oh, man, turn that down. And then all this right here is pretty much the same thing in the, uh, well, these three. Same thing I got in the sleeper. But if you hit this right here, it runs through your pre-trip light test. Yep. So your highs, lows, brakes, Very left, convenient. right, hazards. Very convenient for you to just have, hop oh, on yeah. out and, and uh, walk around your truck and do a light test. Yeah, hit that button and then you go do your walk around and check all your lights in the process. Yep. And if you get the remote control, it has it built into the remote control. That's going to be on the list for when I do that lease purchase, yep. is that remote control. And that thing. And that's the keypad. That's the keypad. Um, <coughs> Prime installs that. It's a security measure, so you have to put in your code every time before you start the truck. Yep. And then something new with this Freightliner is, well, I'm pretty sure it's with the 21s, too. They have automatic he hot, uh, headlights. Nice. So, like a regular car, you just flip that to auto. Whenever it gets a certain amount of darkness, it's going to kick your headlights on. Very nice. That That's nice. I really like that. Yeah. Yep. I'm pretty sure there's still some more stuff that I don't know yet because I'm still learning this truck. Right. I don't that's even have my stuff right in here, here. yet. <laughs> uh, air horn. I'm not gonna, I don't think I should blow it no, right now, I'm wouldn't. sure somebody's sleeping Yeah, a lot of here. people are probably sleeping here, but there's the air horn uh, pole right there. Um, Which is different from the Peterbilt's because the Peterbilt's is just a straight down single thing, if I'm not mistaken, yep. right? It's a braided, kind of a braided leather uh, rope, if you will. Yeah. Uh, whereas this is... Uh, just that, a steel that, cable. Steel cable. So, a little uh, word of advice to anybody who's using that, don't blow this horn out of anger because you'll pull it too hard and man, it will dig into your fingers and, yeah, and, and it, it, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. So only use yeah, it when you're I actually really got a mark it. on my finger right here from it. <laughs> yeah, not good. No, not at all. All right, let's see. We've got uh, a little bit of side storage right here. We've and then got... something else that, this is a little thing that can either be like that or you flip it out, put yep. a trash bag, but I prefer so hanging low. a Walmart bag right here. Yeah, on, on exactly. That's what I did. I put it right here. I have one one side of the bag here, one yeah. side of the bag there. Nice, convenient. Yeah, that just that hook. It's just it's too low to the ground. Yeah, that's I don't fit no trash in that. Yeah, no trash. <clears throat> no, you know, you can't hang your coat there. So no, I don't really know. Not. All I right, might be able to hang a dog sweater and be about it. <laughs> nice. All right, so besides the trash that we got here. Uh, yeah, this is <laughs> brand new truck. stuff I've been peeling off the ground. Brand Tom, new truck. Um, so we got three cup holders, including one that uh, comes with either an ashtray or a coin holder. Yeah. Yep. I don't okay. smoke, so that's going to be my change holder. There you go, change holder, but three cup holders right here. They're built in, rattle free. Yep, rattle yeah, free. Unlike the Peterbilt. Unlike the Peterbilt. That's right. All right, and why don't you say we fire this thing up yeah. and let them hear how this thing, how loud this thing rumbles, shall we? Oh, can't show the code. <laughs> That's why I was kind of holding my hand like that. There we go. Okay, let's let the APU cut off. Oh, and the dash even, is that 
the dash looks different whenever it starts up too. Yeah. Alright, did you even hear it? Did you even hear it? It's pretty This thing quiet. is freaking quiet. Nice and quiet. Now you do have yeah. all the controls right here that you need right on the steering wheel. Right. Which is so much better than having them like up here out of reach and everything. So why don't you go ahead and cycle through everything. Let's tilt the steering wheel up just a little bit. Right there. All right. Uh, so right here, you just got your basic trip mileage right here. It's over the last 1,100 miles, but I'm pretty sure this truck had pulled the other newer trucks in, so it's got a little bit more miles on it. So, and then non-aerodynamic blocks, so six and a half miles to the gallon average. 1,101.0 miles on the money, so brand new. And it's same thing right here, which I'm actually gonna reset that. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep. And right here you got your speed, driver assistance, which is your lane departure warning and your radar cruise control. So if someone pops up into view, it's going to show an image of a vehicle out there in front of you and about how far they are. Yep. And if you depart a lane, those uh, yeah. side markers or side light uh, lines right there, they're going to light up red and it's going to emit through whatever door speaker. It sounds like you're hitting the rumble strip. Yep. And then right here is something new on these, on the 22s, is Eco Driver Feedback, which I just found. Apparently it tells you how good your braking is and how good your acceleration is, which apparently the driver that drove it up here wasn't too good at acceleration. <laughs> That's a pretty cool feature. Yeah. It's brand new. And then right here you got all your digital gauges, your oil temperature, your turbo pressure, your transmission temperature, front and rear drive, axle temp. And another application gauge for your brakes. Which, oh, that one actually works. It didn't yeah. work in my, uh, in my brakes. Really? Really. And because I know the, the load gauge doesn't work, the uh, electric one, because they override it with that uh, yeah. right way scale. Yeah, so this one doesn't work. And it's got your DPF filter, soot level, which it better be good. <laughs> All right. And then your uh, differential locks. It should, yeah, it, little orange light lights up right there. But... That buzzer would get on my nerves climbing veil having to throw chains with that thing locked. Mm, no kidding. And then that's yeah, idle adjust. You, you know, and then you can idle it up to about 900, which I think you can actually go a lot higher than that on the feeder builds, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, you sure can. Yeah, and then you can just choose anywhere from between idling or 900. You just hit that and cancel it out. And it just shows you if you have any alerts and if you have any alerts it'll show up as a caution triangle under whatever thing it is and then your engine hours music right here <coughs> and then it's just all your settings for dash brightness which that can be turned up because it's daytime the lighting which is I guess just Whenever the cab lights turn on in here, you can set a timer for when they turn off yep. after you close the door. Or you can have a dark mode where it doesn't even turn on when you open the doors. Right. And then your units, which is miles, miles per hour. Yep. Basically, freedom units are Canadian units. <laughs> or whatever else, whatever other country uses them. And then your time right here, which I still need to figure out how to adjust the time on that because I still don't even know. Oh, I know the Qualcomm's definitely not right because it's not 1213. <laughs> and then you can actually set your custom gauges right here. Yep, to you whatever sure. order you want, which is right. nice. Right. And I'm actually leaving it like this because that's how I had it set up in my other truck. Perfect. And I think that's all of them. Safety systems. What's that? Okay, it shows you what your. Uh, you see what safety systems the truck has on it. Yeah, That's it's nice. It's going to be more for the uh, the dealership or you know the mechanics when they're working yeah. on it to see which software you're on or what you, you know what you got in there. Yeah, that's nice because the the 19 doesn't have that one. Okay. And I think that's all of it on the dash. Yeah. As far as the gauges, obviously you got your RPM over here, your oil. And I like how they have the fuel and DEF in one gauge. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, yeah, so the fuel is the uh, the white line, the DEF is the blue line, so that's nice. And then over here, on this side, you got your miles per hour. And your 
primary and secondary air tank, which yep. is both in the same gauge. Yeah, you can you can't really see the the blue very well because they're at the same level. But um, yeah, you got two different gauges in there for your primary and secondary, uh, same as they did over here. Uh, so again, it saves room by having it in one gauge. Right. You got your water temp. All right. This thing is just smooth too. Yeah, it definitely idles smoother than that last truck. Yeah, much smoother. You got all your controls over here. If you want to use the phone, you're gonna to have to, to let us all know how the phone works in here because in my in yeah. my uh, Freightliner and my Peterbilt, no. You, you That's what I got my headset for. There you go. Because um, your microphone is way up here. Yeah. Instead of being smart and mounted somewhere right here where it's right by your head, no, they're gonna mount it plumb across the truck from you. Yep. And it doesn't pick up very well. No, yeah. it doesn't. You have to look in its direction and holler. For it yeah. to pick you up, and you got all the echo and all that. But <laughs> hey, you never know; they may have fixed it in this in this model. So they might have because they, they they made a lot of things, a lot of changes, so they might have fixed that too. Yep. Uh, let's see. You got um, all your cruise control stuff right here in the, uh, the steering wheel. Uh, your thank you lights and your your permission lights are yeah. all right in there. As the thank you lights are, you can get over lights. Yeah, and then that's the yep. the thank you lights for someone letting you over. Yep. And then over here, the side uh, controls the uh, volume for the radio, and that's those are all the buttons you're pushing yeah. to navigate. That's to navigate system. to the dashboard. There you go. All right. I think we've pretty much covered everything, right? I think oh. so. Oh, no, we haven't. So here we got, you know, your door locks, your windows. Oh, yeah. Heated mirrors. Right. And something brand new. What are those very, very top buttons? That's two... Adjust your mirror, your power mirrors. There's that one. Okay. Okay, so it's not new. What, are, no. what was I looking for here? I had heard that. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. I had heard that these were also power adjustable. Like oh, here. the blind spot mirrors. No. Yeah, the they're mirrors, not. No. Sadly. Okay. No, they are adjustable manually, but yeah, yeah, they need to be able to adjust those things. From sitting up in the cab. Yeah, that'd be the, that's the next big thing, everybody. Freightliner, you're hearing it. It's the next big thing. Let us adjust these hood mirrors from inside the cab. Yeah, that would be nice. That'd be really nice. All yeah, right. I thought you were talking about the blind spot mirrors in the, from up on, under and, the, and the regular too. mirrors. And that You know, the, the blind spot mirrors, I'd like to be able to adjust those from inside, too. But at least you can roll down the window. And yeah, and you can it. just stick your arm out the window. Yeah, but, I mean, shoot, if you can do that, why have the adjustment <laughs> for the big mirror? <laughs> right, you know, so that's all right. Well, I think we just about covered everything. I think so. Wow. Well, Jacob, thank you very much, man, for this tour. No problem. This thank is you. awesome. And uh, as we mentioned, this is going to go on both of our channels. Right. And uh, any, man, this any is probably going to be here? going up on my channel after I make another video. Just letting know people know what's been going on because, as far as my subscribers know, as of right now, I'm still a company flatbed driver. Yeah. Oh, so this is a surprise yeah. to them. Okay. But they already know I'm going lease reefer. They just don't know when. Oh. Gotcha. All right. Well, I'm going to wait and not post it on my channel until you post yours right. on your channel. We'll do it at the yeah, same time. Yeah, we can do it at the same time. Exactly. Right on. So that, that's why there's a little bit of a delay. And maybe you're, you're seeing me in Springfield right now. <laughs> I might be back out on the road by the time this video is done. You so. might be in California by the time we post this. That's true. I might be. <laughs> There's no telling where I'm going because I'm as soon as I finish throwing all my stuff in here, I'm going to sign the lease and let my new fleet manager know I'm ready for a load. That probably in the morning, and then get rolling tomorrow morning. There you go. There you go. Whereas I'm going to be here all week. I got more more work to do, more stuff to do, and uh, I'll probably roll out on Monday. So ah, uh, here we go, man. It's a warm day out here, it so is. thank you all for hanging in there with us. Hopefully you stayed cool, and uh, we will talk to you guys on the flip side. Later. Later. Thank you for watching this feature presentation from me, JJ the Trucker. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up or two. I'd appreciate it. That way I know which videos you guys are enjoying, and you know what to do now. That's right. That's right. You see it right there. Click on my face. Click on my face. See what happens when you click on my face. You know you want to. Other than that, check out some of my other videos for more great content, such as the one YouTube's recommending, the one I'm recommending, or for more free JJ the Trucker merch, check out the other video. Later.